Warning, the following podcast contains violent scenes that may be unsettling to some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Hello, and welcome to Changing the Lost Vanity. Vanity is a first edition Chronicles of Darkness game set in southern Florida during the year 1993. Father Katrina, played by Tillman, Raymond, played by Chris, Isabel, played by Andrew, Frank, played by Slavic, and Adam as the storyteller, as they uncover the mysteries of the true Fae and forge new paths for themselves in a world of beauty and madness. Follow us on Twitter at twin underscore cities underscore VTM for channel updates, and we hope you enjoy this episode. Let's just do like a what, what we're all thinking. Let's start with Isabel. Okay. Um, Isabel is trying to kind of calm herself she got a little like irritated with raymond and wants to she genuinely does want to help and she does want to you know do what she can to make sure that you know everybody's going to be safe but she also knows that if she's too irritable and worked up and everything that it's just going to ruin everything and so she needs to kind of like relax herself so she is genuinely just trying to do you know, all the things like, okay, let's play some relaxing music, let's eat some food, you know, have a couple of drinks, maybe then I'll chill out. And she's just trying to be, do that thing where she just blends into, you know, and just socializes. As you kind of like get a feel for your surroundings and stuff like that and an attempt to relax, you kind of, um, you turn the tape's volume down a little bit and then up a little bit, just just tweaking it to to make it like the, the perfect, comfortable volume. And kind of just, you know, like uh, mentally kind of clearing out a little bit, having a few sips of beer and just and just really just uh, just trying to unwind, you know, like making a, a conscious effort to try to try to unwind and, and build the, the correct atmosphere for this to happen. This isn't your first rodeo when it comes to this. And you've probably seen your share of, you know, great successes and not having things uh, work as easily as you'd like them to because of because of the scenario that you're in. So you want things to be perfect or as perfect as you can get them at the moment. So you're kind of just, um, just trying to make that happen at the moment. Frank, what's going on in your head right now? You know, he's just very confused with all that's going on. It's just, you know, he's not he's going to grab a beer, some food, relax. Now there's all this stuff that needs to be done. And yeah. Just, just wasn't what day you expected town. kind yeah. of coming into this, you know, you, yeah. you literally arrived and things kind of just like exploded for a exactly. second before you even could get comfortable. So that's definitely understandable. Katrina, what are you thinking about right now? So Katrina wants to lighten the mood a little bit, like for herself, like she needs to do something. So she approaches Isabel and like says, Come on, I'll show you some cha-cha steps. How much do you know? I just, like, you know, responding to him. Like, she can dance. She, she knows how. But she will definitely join in. Katrina, would you kind of see yourself as, like, somewhat of, like, a mediator? Like, you you don't... The, seeing um, all this kind of conflict is, like, uh, uncomfortable for you, maybe? Or, like, yes, how, how do exactly. you... exactly. It's, it's okay. uncomfortable. And she feels like she needs to do something, like... Uh, not to just help the situation on wine. Right. But right. also, like, she can't just sit there and probably the wine on an empty stomach is kicking it a little bit because <laughs> she's a lightweight. <laughs> so she'll fumble around with Isabel trying to show her some, some dance moves. Isabel's into it. She'll dance with you. She's uh, definitely the type who's... Uh, she's into both men and women and you wanting to dance with her she is into that like whether you mean it that way or not she is definitely enjoying herself with you and, and you isabel you also like would probably see this as kind of a way to um kind of shake some of the anger you were just feeling with just a second ago and to try yeah. to get yourself in that right mindset doing some things that are fun and just you know trying to cut loose and just you know like not be so serious even though what you're deep down in, in the back of your head, you understand that if if what you see is is what 
Charlie has said you're going to see pretty much, then things are going to be very uncomfortable for you in a little bit. But you've yeah. just kind of put that in the back. That's on the back burner for right now. And, and you know, you're able to – and it's almost like a like a really, like, disciplined thing to kind of be able to separate the actual fear you might be feeling towards that and just kind of being able to, like, dance and just, like, put yourself in the right mindset to – to, to make this work. And Raymond, what's going on with you right now? Um, Raymond just thinks this is foolhardy, you know, like he just, like he's sitting there like trying to pretend like he's having fun or whatever and, and cooking. But to be honest, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't have that much joy in life, you know? And so for while they're singing and dancing and whatever, you know, kind of having the fun they have, this is just not who he is. You know, he's not going to be outwardly negative about it. You know what I mean? Um, uh, he, he, you know, he's not like sitting there being like, you know, a party pooper. You know what I mean? But he's definitely internally thinking this is foolish, but he understands that this, this, she says this has to be done to get what he needs, then more power to it. You know what I mean? He just doesn't understand how in his mind – it's really hard for him to, to 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 wrap his mind around the fact that people don't have the same reaction to what's going on as he does. Now, as a player, mind you, you know, as a player, I totally fucking get that. But in the character's head, he's not understanding why people aren't ready to call the cavalry. You know what I mean? And like, do what they have to root this out. And almost in a way, too, it's like it's really fucking with his head. You know what I mean? Because he really, in his head, thought that. You know, he got the reputation he did with a couple of people because of that when he got angry and snapped and killed that one guy years ago. And so in his head, he always thought that, that well, okay, he got accolades for doing that. You know what I mean? If the situation ever came around to where one of these things came back or came to the town, everyone would be reacting like him. And now he's seen that, like, wait, like this whole freehold that's built on, like, you know, mutual protection or whatever. And he's like, not everyone's up in arms about this. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's even a little let down that Norma isn't, you know what I mean? And that you, you get me like, it seems like there's all these other ulterior motives now, especially hearing about the drugs, you know what I mean? And his head and that being dealt by his kind, he's just like starting to the faith, I guess he had it quote unquote in the freehold or in the, in the system is, is slowly starting to like chip away, you know, and he's witnessing it here firsthand. He's like seeing these people who, I mean, I would say he cares about Katrina you know what I mean? And he cares about every changeling, but he feels a connection with Katrina. Not as strong as he would with Frank and Isabel, but he's just like not understanding it. He's not getting it. And in part of his mind, he's thinking like, this is why they keep doing what they do. And this is why they keep winning. And these creatures keep, you know what I mean? Getting away with this stuff because we are just sitting here trying to pretend for the life of us that they don't exist, you know? But out of character, it's fucking cool. I love it. You know what I mean? It's just in his head, he's just not he he can't wrap it. He can't do it. You know what I mean? He can put the mo the movements and pretend he is, but just internally he can't. You know what I mean? It's right. Alien. And so you're like at the moment right now, like you you know you're like a little bit disillusioned because things are just like not really what what you thought they were entirely. You know, you this thing is is you know this threat is is so imminent right now, and you're seeing so many people kind of either shy away from it or just just try to say maybe it's something else or you know it's 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 a lot of a lot of everything but just facing it and saying like if this is what we think it is like this is fucked up and we need to like we need to act like militantly we need to like strike and that's kind of like you you have like a really almost like summer summer court state of mind when it comes to that like you believe in 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 defending yourself against against the the true fae like almost above all and i mean you you identify with with autumn because that's your that's your core and you know something about their core emotion is has connected with you and and you know but just seeing seeing like the way that people are reacting to this it's just not what you expected that's not to discredit any of the other people in your freehold it's just it's just totally not how you imagined people would would react to this you know it's kind of just unsettling to you a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like he lived autumn life for the last ten years. He wasn't like proactively like we got to hunt them down or yeah. whatever. You know what I mean? He was just like trying to escape his pain. But now that's back. Yeah, his mentality is very much gone into that. You know, and I can almost I would almost say like he feels like because he goes like you know how I mentioned 
in character creation, he'll go like where his temper will come out and he'll he'll crash really hard. And he can he can feel that tickling on the back of his neck, like that depressive, you know what I mean? Like manic state that he knows is not going to hit him anytime soon, but he can really like feel that letdown he feels is opening the door for that depression to come, you know, through. Especially hearing like Norma knows about these drugs and absolutely didn't do anything about it. Exactly. You know? And you you are you're like you're let down by that. And there's a part of you that is almost like if that's true, then what what can I what can I even trust if if Norma has kind of known about this and and it's it's a it's a weird thing and it's like it's hard. It, you've you know you've seen based on what Katrina has explained to you that like Norma basically knew about this shadiness that was going on and kind of shied away from it because it was difficult to face and that's sort of like a a trend that you're you're seeing a lot in this freehold which you know to to you was a very very like cohesive a group that kind of just like ran itself without any kind of problems you know every season. The, the leaders change and, you know, everything here is just seems like such a such a stark difference to Miami. But now you're starting to think like maybe maybe this is all the same shit, just in a different place, you know. And, you know, no matter how much we kid ourselves about whatever, it's the same kind of bullshit is going on. So, so is okay. the kid asleep yet? Is he falling <laughs> asleep? Is he still awake? What's going on with him? OK, I want to say uh, about a half hour goes by and you know, it's kind of like it's almost like a like a sleeping baby. You just like don't want to wake. Like every now and the, every couple of minutes, you guys will kind of like peek in, hoping not to disturb him and wake him up any further. We'll actually say it's it's taking a little bit longer than I said. Not not like a half hour or so. We'll say you guys are hanging out for like two hours, oh, kind of God. just like goofing <laughs> off. And at this point, you're you know, I'm imagining you're probably getting a little bit restless. Um, yeah. The sun is starting to go down. It's like seven thirty, and you know you're starting to see that pinkish color in the sky as as the sun is is making its its descent and it's becoming nighttime. All of you have been kind of periodically checking in to see if he's finally been able to ease himself into a sleep, and finally you you see that the the shivering underneath the blanket is stopped, and you think this may be maybe the chance right now. So, noticing this. Isabel will kind of like look at all of you and just be like, okay, I think I can do this. Would it help you if I can ensure that he stayed asleep while you're doing this? It'll be fine. I can, I can make him dream as long as I need him to, as long as he's actually asleep. Out of character. Am, here's what I'm thinking. I'm going to need to know if I need to do my contract or not. Cause I'm worried with him being restless and you know what I'm saying? And like the going through the withdrawals, if he'd wake up, but I mean, if she says it's good, it should be good, right? You know. So out of character, given Charlie's, given Charlie's like current state right now, there's definitely going to be like like a minus one. You could I do could... that. You could do that. I don't know, like how you would feel about doing that. Like how would Raymond feel about doing something like that to another changeling? Like I mean, I know that in this situation, it's for the. It's greater for good. the greater good, but would he feel any sort of apprehension about using fey magic on on one of his own kind? No, not if I think that Charlie Charlie showed me that he wants to help. You know what I mean? And that I think something this is yeah, extreme. You guys made a whole pact about it, so yeah, 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 yeah. This is extreme. So like my mind, and I'm going to say this in character, okay? Like, and, I, and I'll look at her and I'll be like, I can sh- ensure it's easier for you by making sure he doesn't awake. Can I describe how I feel that he would do it? You know what I mean, or is there a specific yes. like rule? In the set? Okay, you're gonna let him. You're gonna let him try to yeah. do his thing before. He, okay, yeah. If he I mean that's he, a, he's trying to help. He, yeah, he is. I totally he am trying to him. help. So, but yeah. but Isabel, you probably are getting this. I mean, you know <laughs> that this is a sensitive situation, and you kind of aren't sure how he views this whole situation. And like, there's probably some apprehension that he's gonna fuck it up, and it's gonna make I, it actually harder would, for I you. I would be on that side if it wasn't for the us hanging out for two hours, just chilling, right. and relaxing. At this, so okay. Right. After all of that, she's more like, "Okay, go ahead and do your thing." Right. Okay. So, otherwise, she would have been like, "Nah, no, nah, let me. I, I'll do this. You need to back the fuck off." But right now, she's like, "Okay, you want to help? You will. You let me just relax and do all this stuff. All right, let's. Okay, go ahead." So out of character, I'm not. If I do this, I'm helping her, right? 
Yeah, we don't know. It's up to Adam. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I mean, so basically, out of character, this is yeah. how it's going to work. If you, if you do, um, bomb on the unwakeable slumber. Yeah. What is it like? Darkness three. Darkness, darkness. Yeah. If you do darkness three on him, you're you're going to lessen the difficulty for Isabel, and he's okay. going to stay asleep. Um, if you don't do it, there's it's going to be more difficult for Isabel, and there's like always the possibility that he's not going to stay asleep or whatever. So I'm going to do that first. So I guess what I'm going to do is just ask, like, are, are, is Frank and Katrina, are you guys going to be in the living room while we do this, or are you guys staying outside? Well, I'm probably going to use my gift first just to make the room more comfortable for everyone. All right, so cool. Yeah, I'll probably just, you know, Take one of those things to uh, flip steaks, whatever. Just pick up coal, walk into the room, and then, you know, he spits on the fading ember. And wait, I have to roll. And I'm going to pop a willpower point on this because I don't have much. It's survival plus weird. I have two points in survival, one in weird. So oh, on the wall. I managed to <laughs> fail that roll. Yeah, nothing happens. I, just, I blow on it and just spit on it. Uh, <laughs> that's so weird. That's so funny, though. If you if you're like <laughs> spitting on the grill to try to do the catch, yeah. and it's just like, it just kind it of fizz, fizzles out. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, guys. I guess I'm not in the right mood for it. Isabel oh. totally gets that. <laughs> So when I uh when when he's done there, I just kind of like ask, kind of motion for the others to back up a couple feet, you know what I mean? And I go up to him while he's laying on the couch, you know what I mean? And I like kneel by like his head, and I can almost picture like him like gently grabbing the sides of Charlie's head, and like he takes a deep breath, like like he li- keeps his head above his, you know, like not like face and face to face, but like is looking up and takes like a deep breath. And through his nose, and then he looks, turns and looks down at Charlie with his eyes closed and just like breathes out like some of the almost, and it looks almost like some of the smoke that is, um, uh, that is w- within him, you know what I mean? To like, to, 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 to almost like cover his face like a mist almost to kind of like ensure that he's like going to be asleep. So it's like, and like I would say, even like the extended breath would almost seem like it goes on longer than it should, you know, as it's like blowing out onto his face. So to do that, I need to spend so one. Gl- give me um, manipulation plus weird, yep. and it's going to be against Charlie's resolve in weird. So that's um, it's going to be against three dice here. So, so I need just... manipulation and weird. So manipulation is three. Weird is one. Oh, okay. uh, can I spend a willpower? Yeah. Okay, I'll spend a willpower. Just so you know, I'm down to two willpower and two glamour. So so three successes. Okay. So, yeah, that definitely works then. So, yeah, he's he's just completely out now. And you just kind of see, like, it's almost like the stress in his face, that, that vein that's kind of sticking out of his forehead, that, that pain you can kind of see in his expression just just fades as he experiences this deep real sleep and he's just just out cold i stand up slowly and i like put my hand on like the arm of the couch like help myself up and i just kind of take like three steps in the opposite direction where they are at against my wall i'm looking at him waiting for isabel to do what she needs to do so while you guys are kind of um you know while while you do this and then you sort of back away for Isabel to to do her thing. There's kind of this like this sense that you guys are just like working as like a complete like unit right now. You know, it's it's unspoken. You're just doing this thing and she's going to go you're making room for her to do the next thing and you guys are moving in silence and you know, you just hear this subtle soft rock playing very lowly from the from the cassette player. Katrina is kind of leaning in the doorway, observing all this happens. Um, Frank is standing in a corner. Both of them just kind of leaving you to the the room to to try to try to get this to work correctly. Katrina, what are you thinking right now? Like seeing Raymond do this? I'm just um, watching intently, like 
pondering whether this is really the right thing to do to Charlie right now. Like, he looks miserable still, right? No, so you sort of saw this this miserable look on his face just kind of wash away oh. as Raymond put him into this this you know total sedated sleep this this unwakeable state of of sleep. It was like it was like the sleep that he was in before was almost like a half sleep while he tried to shake off the the pain of um of his of his detox. Okay, and, but I I think sorry. I still get some creepy vibes from it like right uh, and it's a very it weird thing to observe a bit like mean, euthanasia. yeah he was in the deepest pain and now it was taken away like it, it seems weird yes definitely it 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 would look very weird raymond you stand up and kind of back away for isabel to step in yeah isabel is gonna kind of like uh go around to the side of the couch uh you know how they have like the little arms on the side there she kind of faces that his head's there and just lowers her forehead down and touches her forehead to his and yeah this is using um forging the dream it's it's weird Uh, i'm gonna use a willpower on this and you let me know if i have any bonus dice or anything like that and i'll kind of describe it when i roll the pool yeah so i'm gonna say it's um it's gonna be plus one for you know this person. It's going to be plus one for the fact that Raymond just put him in a in a very deep sleep with his contract, and it's going to be plus one for the for the like the low mu- mood music and lighting and the kind of setup that you've kind of carefully planned. You know, it it takes a little bit of feng shui to 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 make the room you know like a, a more calming and welcoming place. So go ahead and, and add all those on to your roll. Um, no minuses. Uh, I was going to do a minus one if, if Raymond, you know, if Charlie wasn't in a in a complete, complete deep sleep, but... Ah, uh, um, one success. One success, okay. One. Yeah, with nine dice, one success. <laughs> so... <clears throat> so... It's not an exceptional success, but it's a success, so... So it works, it, it and I mean, yeah, and... But you you feel like a little bit of resistance as you try to as you try to enter it. But but you you make your way into into his his wandering you know dream as as his head kind of is just like you see these these thoughts just sort of shifting around. So I just kind of picture this uh, like you know there's like these swirling images in his mind. He's in his fevered state and seeing all these just dis- disassociated things and she just kind of like steps into all of that as like the one calm focused point of her present in his dream and just whispering in his ear and says to him, "Show me. Show me what you saw." And just getting him to to get his own mind to focus on this thing that he saw. Getting him to show me, you know, his his uh, what he saw in his dreams, kind of forging like the memory and helping him shape it to like what specifically happened that exact night, drawing upon his own memories and his dreams to just kind of make this scene replay out. It may not be exactly right, but you know, that's okay. It's enough to kind of give me like confirmation or not. You know, you are inside of the dream right now, and and you you whisper. To, to Charlie, show me, you know, show me what happened that night. And you sort of, you sort of like see that this, your surroundings begin to kind of change little by little. You, you notice like, it's almost like uh, somebody's like painting a picture around you and things start to change to what appears to be the night that Charlie described. You see, you see him, this is like, you're viewing it as if it was like a camera, you know, as if you're a camera on the outside, just kind of just kind of seeing this all happen. It it feels like you're just standing there watching, but but you're not actually there. It's it's like a very uh disassociative uh, sort of feeling, but not one that you're unfamiliar with. And you start to see, you know, the night sky kind of kind of paint the paint above you and you see the surrounding of of uh palm trees and a few houses start to start to fill in the your peripheral vision. Until you're, until you're watching Charlie kneeling below this window outside of a house, and you can almost feel his heart bumping 
as he just waits there. And then he's just waiting and waiting and something just changes. The, the dream just starts to shift and you get this, this, this rush of just like pure adrenaline as you find yourself just instantly transported back to Charlie's, Charlie's grandmother's house, the place that you guys had all driven to together to, to retrieve Charlie. And it's, it's like you're, it's like you're seeing things through his eyes for a second as he just, as he walks into his bedroom and gazes upon himself sleeping and he just watches for a second and you can just feel this just heart just beating, beating out of your own chest. It feels like you are him for this moment. And it's just, it's just so powerful. This fear that you feel just, just making the, the hairs on the back of your neck stand up and he's just staring and staring at, at himself as he sleeps in this bed. And then he just grabs the, the sleeping figure by the throat and just starts to just wail on its head with, a, with a, what looks like a metal tool, just over and over, just in a complete frenzy, just over and over and over. And you just feel this, this, this like blood rush as, as he's just, just violently just losing himself and just, and just, just attacking this figure. And the the blood s- sprays up on your face, and and you just you just hear these these uh these terrible sounds of just gurgling and pain, as 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 you end this thing's life, and it turns to to straw and and objects and tinsel and and dust before you, and then you kind of things start to go black a little bit. It just it just starts to fade out, and you find yourself awake and Charlie is now currently awake and he's just totally, totally manic. Whatever had just happened has, has broken the contract somewhat. And he's, he's just like up in the root. This is, this is like the dream has kind of just like come to like an abrupt halt. And he is on his feet trying to, like trying both to of us kind of like snap the awake room. At the same time. Yeah. You guys both just in an instant snap awake and he's, he's, he wakes up and he's screaming and he's just like, what the fuck? What the fuck? And he just, he's just trying to leave. He, he's, you know, he's ready to jump out the window and he just, he just gets up off the couch and just tries to bolt. Which I imagine like Frank and Raymond are not going to let that happen. No. Yeah, I'm, um, trying to, I'm trying to rush towards them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, if you guys want to, you're able to stop him before he even, you know, is able to, to make it fully off the couch. Um, yeah, he's I'll like a really I'll weakened stop. state, but this really surprises you because that wasn't supposed to happen at all. And now things are starting to the the weird behavior that you saw from him earlier that made you kind of question if this was just a natural reaction to detoxing or if this is something weirder or usual or unusual. It's all starting to kind of this is adding to that suspicion that whatever's going on with him is is not usual. She didn't see any vision of the true the true Faye that he that that he said he saw, right? She no, just, it, it changed I, to a different memory completely. I had started to yeah. see it, and then like oh, this almost as if he almost as if he that. tried to show you, and then it just sort of switched to this this other memory that he had. I'm gonna I'm gonna cut to to you, Isabel, and and how you how you like are are feeling from all this in a second, but you just see Charlie is just. You know, he's in this this feeling of just like, just totally like that bewilderment that you saw earlier, but now it's just panic, just total disassociation of of um of him of himself. You know, he just he has no idea where he is. He he just wants to get the fuck out. He's in pure survival mode. Okay, so Isabel kind of recoils like uh, visibly, like like you know, just like like she was just shoved backwards you know, from him. Whenever he, the two of them woke up, she just, you know, stumbles a bit, backs up, and she's just kind of frantic and looking around and, like, getting a sense for back where she is, you know, what's going on. You know, she wasn't expecting this kind of outcome at all and just kind of getting a... a trying to center herself. Katrina will run to water and, like, hold her so she doesn't fall down. She's kind of gives her, like, a grateful kind of, like... Like leaning on her support, just kind of like, 
thank you, thank you. Just kind of just steadying herself, calming her breathing. You know, she's kind of maybe a little bit uh, hyperventilating at first and just kind of relaxing and just, you know. Don't want to push, but did did you see it? She's kind of like shaking her head, kind of like uh, really almost almost imperceptibly to the others. Just like, no, no, I didn't, didn't, I didn't see it at all. Like there's confusion in Katrina's case. Yeah, there's face, confusion like... on my face too. I'm going. I, when I do, I hear that while I'm like holding on to Charlie, like trying to get him to sit down. Do I hear? Yeah. them say that? You can hear that, although at this point, Charlie is starting to, like, scream bloody murder. Okay. He's, I'm gonna... he's literally just screaming for his life at this point. There's just something, something is just, you know, he he has, he doesn't know where he is at this point. He, he's unable to figure out who, who you guys are. It's just like amnesia or something, and he's just, he's just screaming. I'm going to, I'm going to say, like, forgive me. Like, I know he probably doesn't hear me, and as I, like, grab, like, both of his shoulders... You know, I'm trying to pin him down. I'm going to, like, move my hands up and grab his face again. And I'm just going to use the witch's intuition. And um, one thing that, like, I could picture almost like him doing with the witch's intuition is, like, he almost, like, his face almost loses its form. You know what I mean? Like, like that he has at the time and starts, like, almost, like, I could, like, for some reason, I'm, like, thinking, like, Cthulhu-like shit. You know what I mean? Like, his face starts, like, changing shape, like, in the smoky thing and starts, like, expanding and withdrawing and, like, can't even, doesn't yeah. even look like a face anymore. And it just, can like, definitely starts do that, yeah. There's, like, all these random, like, shadow teeth that come around and, like, it just starts, a, like, like almost like a symbiotic, like, whoosh, like, starts, like, like, shooting out in a way as it's, like, trying to find, like, a form of his fear as he's like staring into his, like, you know, staring into his face. I think I need to roll a wits plus weird minus the subject's composure. And I get a plus one modifier because I have a pledge, right? I have a pledge with him. Okay. If you look yeah, on 156, and... it'll, yeah, I'll let you his look His composure at. is two, by the way. Oh, wits and weird. Fucking wits. I need to hire weird, man. Wits and weird. That's four. That's like. That's like a generation for vampires. It's one of those things where it's like really hard to get. Uh, now like you have to spend a lot of XP or whatever to get it. I have two willpower left. If I spend one, I mean, I'm like really scraping the bottom of the bucket at that time, right? I mean, like, do, and I have to spend a glamour. What happens if you're down to one glamour? I think you probably would just be like, well, could I be off this? for glamour, but. Um, the thing is, you can't you can't harvest off other changelings. Okay, gotcha. No worries. I thought no, no soft. worries. It's just like it's just like um. I think you feel an emptiness. It isn't like yeah. hunger and yeah. vampire. It's like you're drained, basically. Mm -hmm. Like I'll go with the character. You know how he's feeling at the moment. You know what I mean. Yeah. So I'm gonna spend a willpower, blow the glamour. You said his is two. His composure is two. Yep. So wits and wild. Willpower seven. gives you three extra dice. Minus two, five dice, five dice. And then do I get a plus one? If you look on 157, there's a suggested modifiers. It says plus one if the character has a pledge with the target. Yep, you guys have a pledge together. So, so go ahead and do dice. a plus one to that. Okay, so one success. All right, so this thought, just this idea just rushes to your head. And it's just Charlie looking at a reflection of himself. And then that, that, that thought just kind of fades from you. Um, and he's still freaking out, right? Yeah, he's still just freaking out. You're, you know, you'd you'd have to put your hand over his mouth to to get him to stop screaming. At this point, it's very. I'm imagining everybody in the room is very alarmed by this. You know, like it's kind of there's a person screaming. This this thing just ended in such this abrupt and you know chaotic manner, and. I'm I'm just gonna like try to put my mouth my hand over my mouth over his mouth, my hand over his mouth <laughs> and like look back at everyone and be like, Help, help, please help me. Help me, help. And I'm just like starting to like like pleadingly look at him because I'm fucking like my guy's at, at you know what I mean, scraping the bottom of the bucket now, you know what I mean? And he's like like it feels helpless. Isabel just looks at Frank expectantly. Can anyone calm him down? Help. Uh Frank will run run to him quickly. Uh, it's just, you know, it's start to slowly, I guess. Uh, just hold him down till he relaxes. Hold him. Yeah. Do 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 any of you have any way to calm him down? Do you do any of you way have a calm a way to calm him down? 
Isabel will kind of kneel at his side as like Frank's like holding on to him. He's struggling and just kind of like, shh, relax. It's okay. Calm down. You're not going to be hurt. You know, just kind of <laughs> like talking to him. She's just kind of yeah. trying like verbally try and relax him through a soothing voice and see if that works. Is that a thing I can try and roll? Like maybe uh, empathy or something? I don't know. Yeah, definitely. All right. So give me a... I've got expression. Socialize. I don't know if that... I don't think that fits here. But I've got expression. Um, okay. If you want me to do empathy, I could do empathy. I don't get a dice penalty because of being a uh, uh, fairest. Okay, yeah. Let's Let's think. Let's do empathy and... Presence? Presence. Does striking looks apply? Um, I don't think so. Maybe. I mean, if you can make an argument for that, I mean, like, striking looks, like, it could be comforting to be... To get his um, attention and just, like, shh, it's okay, relax, you know, cupping his yeah, face. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll say, yeah, we, we like, can apply that, definitely. Okay, so presence? Yeah, the way I'm seeing it is, like, if this goes well, like, using your striking looks, like, he's gonna see you as this, like, angelic figure that's kind of just, like, telling him, you know... I have one success. Yeah, he stopped screaming, and he's he's just looking around, panicked. And then his eyes just catch Raymond, and something clicks with him, and he's just Raymond, Raymond, Raymond. What the fuck is happening right now? You know, he's like he's slowly coming to. Where the fuck am I? See, like Raymond takes like a couple deep breaths, and he's like shaking. You know what I mean? Like a little bit, like and his face is like contorted, and he's just. You know, because it's back to his normal form, and he just like he, he's having a hard time, especially the moment like Charlie's like Raymond, Raymond, like putting all this pressure on him to like answer all these questions, and Raymond just like gets up and turns around and just like bolts out the front door and just starts like walking towards the the ocean. Oh my god, you run away! Yeah, <laughs> walks towards the ocean and is just like fucking having like this. You know what I mean? Like he needs air. You know what I mean? Like all this shit is just like, well, yeah, I'm trying to play the lore. I'm trying to play the 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 having the low willpower and the only the one in weird right now you know what i mean and him just feeling like he's like this is all just fucking too much pressure at the moment and he just like shoots out there and he's just like, <gasps> like he's almost feeling like like runs out of his porch front door you know what i mean and walks out like runs out to the beach and stops like right where the tide is coming in and it's just like <sighs> like almost like he feels like he's uh you know what I mean? Like having a panic att- not having a panic attack but he feels like he's very close and he just kind of drops to his knees and he's just trying to like just calm himself down, like put his fingers into the sand, you know, and just kind of like trying to, 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 to escape whatever is in there because it's just all becoming too much for him at the moment. I think that's so. Good I want to follow him, and you said he's uh, falling to his knees, mm-hmm. and I want to use uh, Vain Glory One, um, <laughs> Mask of Superiority. Ooh. What does that do? Like, cool uh, shit. approach him, uh, not comfort him, like, not bend down to him. So I approach a superior posture and say, You need to calm down, Raymond. This is the at least the third time today that you've completely lost it. Charlie depends on you. you and I think I need to roll. So it's weird plus intimidation. intimidation minus resolve. It's minus Raymond's resolve. Which is two. So first I think I need to spend two glamour, is that correct? Um you're not pretending to be a socialite or a celebrity from like high standing, so I spent two glamour, it's uh what was it again? Weird intimidation. Minus my resolve. Yeah, minus yeah. his two. Okay, I failed. Perfect. <laughs> Raymond is like, what? That wow. went swimmingly. Hello, folks. Have you ever wished you could have an easy way to find gameplay videos and podcasts, or just media in general that deals with your favorite white wolf role playing games? Or have you ever wished you could find a forum to share gameplay that you have recorded, one which wouldn't be drowned out by random posts and discussion? so that your media could get the attention you want. Well, we have the answer for you in a Facebook group we run called White Wolf RPGs Gameplay and Media. The group is specifically ran with the sole intent of it being a one-stop shop for people to view 
or share media involving the games we all love. We take thorough steps to ensure the page does not become cluttered and is easy to traverse. We are currently over 1,000 members strong, and we are continuing to rapidly grow with new media being shared every day. Stop on by. We hope to see you there. High Level Games, the industry's first choice in taking your games to the next level. We are a podcast blog and new media network at highlevelgames.ca. We have blog posts about all of your favorite games going up five days a week and a podcasting network with actual plays and shows that discuss role-playing games with more rolling out all the time. We are on iTunes, Twitch, and YouTube. Find out more information at highlevelgames.ca, a site that certainly isn't controlled by a shadowy board of directors of otherworldly origin. That's highlevelgames.ca. Please, help. They're coming. The Los Angeles metropolitan area is constantly growing and changing. The Central District is full of new buildings. The Hollywood and Wilshire districts, once far from downtown, now are part of a which spreads past Beverly Hills and out to the ocean. But why is all this going on in Los Angeles? Why is Los Angeles an exploding city? Neon Masquerade The Demon's Mirror Thirteen Candles Three chronicles running through the undead veins of the City of Angels. The Esoteric Order of Role Players Actual Play Podcast invites you to drink deeply. Go to eorpodcast.com and search the Duets tag to find out more. <laughs> 